So as you come to your comfortable seat, remember that this week we're focusing on that idea of setting intentions. And in particular, often I give that suggestion that you can always have a body-centered intention, something that you'd like to work through or work on, which is a wonderful thing to do for yourself. But this week we're focusing on bringing it to the heart-centered intentions. And so we've focused on compassion and we've focused on peace. And honestly, I think that all of these heart-centered intentions come back to the same place, obviously, you know, to the compassion center, to the heart. Um, but there are so many different topics and they can very much relate to some basic human needs that we need to cultivate or that we, basic human needs that we can um, meet for ourselves. Um, and so today we're going to focus on um, a little bit of the gratitude concept and with this gratitude concept, bringing it back to the heart and recognizing that gratitude can come in many forms. We can, we can be grateful and we can choose gratitude for many things. Um, and one of those things can be body stuff to work on because our body stuff to work on helps us to open up to our heart what's there. So as you settle into your seat, shift your sitting bones and rest your hands onto your thighs here. If you're sitting cross-legged, you can always press fingertips into the floor instead. It's a wonderful way to ground for yourself. The lengthen up through your sides, shoulders are up and back, lengthen the back of the neck. And then as you close your eyes, notice your breath and notice where it travels and begin to notice a longer or full breath that expands into more places. And then bring the attention to the heart, to the space around the heart. I'm filling up the front and the back of the heart. And tuning into this intention of gratitude. Where even if the work is challenging, maybe in the body or maybe a situation in our lives, that choosing gratitude helps us to see things in a different light. Take a couple big breaths with this idea of gratitude. And then hands come to connect at heart center. And as you gently press your palms together, lift a little through the elbows and then lift through the shoulders, shoulders up and back, shoulder blades engage. And now as you exhale and bow toward your heart, maybe allow fingertips and forehead to touch, ultimately sealing in this intention of gratitude. And now softly opening your eyes, lift your gaze, but keep your hands in this prayer position or this Anjali Mudra. And then we're going to press with our hands as we bring our wrists to about elbow height. So if they're a little lifted, draw them a little down, giving the wrists a little flexion, but also the forearms a little stretch. Draw your shoulder blades onto your back again. Lengthen the back of your neck. And then start a little movement here with your wrists. So you're tipping your fingertips down and then up, down and then up a few times. And now bring hands back to back. Think of connecting at the wrists. 
And again, think of wrists and elbows coming approximately to the same height. Not exact, right? Where we don't have exact bodies, perfectly, you know, spaced bodies or anything like that. So as we draw shoulder blades onto our backs, just notice if there's any sensation there through this flexion in the other way through the wrists. Take a big deep breath. And then start a little rocking here. And as you rock, just bring awareness to whatever is showing up through forearms, wrists, wherever sensation is happening. Because there's no right or wrong answer, right? There's no right or wrong because all of our bodies are different and all of the differences are perfect. So as we move a little bit here and recognize this sensation, make mental note of where it starts and where it ends. Okay, then go ahead and give your hands a shake. And now hands come to clasp and palms are pressing, forearms are pressing, and then start to rotate through your hands, drawing figure eights with them. And as you do that, with forearms continuing to stay together, you're creating a little massage for the forearms along with moving through the wrists. And then switch directions with those figure eights. Good, okay, and then go ahead and shake it out. And now hands come to clasp and elbows are wide. And then we're making waves through our forearms and hands. As you make these waves, again, take a moment to notice what and where the sensations are. And the super awesome fun part is to switch directions. <laughs> My favorite thing is when I'm in person with people to see the eyes kind of look up to one side because it's a little bit of a, a mental challenge and side of the brain challenge to switch directions. Okay, shake it out. And then switch the cross of your legs coming to the less comfortable cross for yourself. And then move the sitting bones. And now hands come behind your head to clasp and press your head back into your hands. And as you do so, just notice if those front ribs flare forward, which is common. So now open elbows wide, draw shoulder blades onto your back and take an exhale, draw your ribs in. And even more so think of drawing all the way to your low belly in. Then press your head back and with your ribs, ribs engaging, lift them up again. And then release your hands down, give your shoulders a little roll back, a little hot side to side movement with your head and your neck. And now back in the center and take hands behind to clasp. And as you keep your hands pressed right against your back here, Press palms together, and then lift your shoulders up and back. Start to hug your elbows back, giving that extra stretch to the front of the chest, and begin to lift up and open through the heart space again. And as you tune in here again to whether or not your ribs tend to flare, engage through the low belly and the front ribs. Inhale, lift your chest, and maybe start to move your hands slightly away from your back, Think about keeping elbows and wrists bent or unlocked, I should say. When you lock your wrists, you end up bending them. But okay, and gently release and walk your fingertips forward now and come into as deep a forward fold as your body needs. And that might mean setting something underneath your hands or elbows in front of you. Take a couple moments to breathe, shift and move, and notice here what's showing up without any kind of judgment. And this is where gratitude can come in, where you get to choose to be grateful for what's showing up, even if it's intense and difficult. 
Because what is it there for? It's there for us to figure stuff out. And that's a helpful, awesome thing. So take another big deep breath as you move your ribs forward. Think of letting your sitting bones tilt a little bit up. And then walk your hands back. And we're going to shift onto our hands and knees. And from hands and knees, we have that setup place of wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, and a rotation of elbow pits forward and a push. Palms and fingertips are pressing down well. Lift the head to the back plane of the body. And now reach your right leg back behind you and your left arm forward. We have opposites here. And if toes touching down and fingertips touching down is a better place for your body today, then please choose that for yourself. Choose to work where you are, recognizing what's present. And now as you engage through your heel behind you and your fingertips, plug back in, draw your shoulder blade onto your back on the left side, draw your femur bone into your hip socket, and now engage the core. Low belly and ribs lift, your back body expands. Exhale, both hands come down, both knees come down. Before we take the second side, move through a couple rounds of your cat and cow here. Inhale, tilting sitting bones up, lifting and expanding through the heart space. Exhale, rounding up through the back. Let your head become, or your neck become long. One more this way, full inhale, long deep exhale. Then inhale back to a neutral place for your spine. And think of rotating elbow pits forward and pushing. Extend your collarbones forward. And then before we lift anything, we're going to engage the low belly and the ribs. So think of ribs lifting up, low belly lifting up. Try to keep that even as you reach your left leg back and your right arm forward. Take a full big breath and notice for yourself what's present in your body as you do this work. And can you choose some gratitude here? Push through your standing hand, lift your ribs more, lift your low belly more, maybe lift your arm and your leg more. Exhale, set hands down, set knees down. And now, big toes together, knees wide if you would like. They can always be narrow. Settle hips back towards your heels into your child's pose. And take a few moments to move, shift, let your head settle. Then inhaling, rising back up to hands and knees. Rotate elbow pits forward and push. Lift your head to the back plane of your body. Now tuck toes under and lift hips up and back. Downward facing dog pose. And now tilt sitting bones up. Take a couple big breaths as you re-rotate your elbow pits more toward the front of the room, which is hard to do when you shift positions here. And then engage, low belly and ribs. And then walk your way forward, coming into your forward fold at the front of your mat. And take a couple of moments here in your forward fold to find a forward fold that serves you right now. So now that could be wider feet, that could be a really big bend to your knees, that could be elbows up on your thighs. Take a full big breath and notice where your forward fold needs to be to support you the best. Wherever that is, tilt sitting bones up. And then inhale, lengthen part way, long spine, extend your heart forward. Exhale, fold over your legs. Hands to hips, press back on hips, lift shoulders, lift elbows, and rise all the way up to stand. And now as you come up to stand, feet come to inner hip distance if they were wider. Just take a moment to find that place of ankles stacked underneath hip bones. And then lift and spread your toes and root them down. Turn palms forward and lift shoulders up and back. Close your eyes if you would like and take a full breath, resetting this intention of gratitude for your practice, for whatever is showing up in your body, in your mind, even in your life. Inhale, stretch up overhead. 
Exhale, bent knees to fold over your legs. Inhale, lengthen part way. Long spine extending forward through collarbones, extending back and up with sitting bones. And now find blocks, whatever you're using. It can also be a chair or a stool, but set your hands up on something and your chest gets to move forward here. So now we're gonna shift our weight just a little onto our left foot and lift our right leg up behind us. And as you extend your heart forward here, rotate your outer right hip down so your hips work toward level with each other. Tone the low belly and the ribs, extend your collarbones more. Extend back through your heel behind you. Good, exhale, both feet come down. Pause here with a more even position and set your sitting bones upward, tilt them upward. Extend your heart further forward. Now, before you lift your leg, engage the low belly, engage the ribs up, and then lift the leg. As you lift the leg, press through your heel behind you, extend your collarbones more, and re-engage the core. Those low ribs lifting up help you to expand into your kidney area in the back. Let's take a big breath here. And exhale, both feet come down. Inhale, lengthen part way, and exhale, fold over your legs. Plant fingertips, you can use blocks or the floor. Step your right foot back into your lunge, and then bring your hands up to your hips to rise. And as you center your hips more toward the front of your mat, wrapping the left hip back, start to push down with your back toes, and think of your upper inner thigh lifting on your back leg. And now inhale, stretch up. And for this, let's keep arms open wide into more of a Y shape here. Plug in with your shoulder blades and then tilt up with your collarbones and even think of up and back. Take a big deep breath and tone, low belly and ribs. Exhale, hands come down to the front of your mat. Step all the way back into a downward facing dog pose and take a full breath. Remember that you're always welcome to be on hands and knees instead. And now as you rotate elbow pits more forward and push more through your hands, think of sending sitting bones further up and then engage your core. Low belly, ribs engage. Then inhale, come forward into a plank. Knees are always an option. Whatever's touching the ground, push and expand your back body a little further up. Now extend your collarbones more forward and up, and then bend elbows and lower down. Inhale, curl up and open as high as your body is ready for, coming to your variation of cobra. Shoulders are up and back. Your head is in line with your spine. Take a big breath. Exhale, downward facing dog or hands and knees, your choice. And then walking your way forward, come into your forward fold at the front of your mat. Take an inhale and lengthen part way, long spine. Exhale and fold. And then planting fingertips, you're stepping left foot back this time into your lunge. Center with your hips and then bring your hands up to your hips to rise. And as we come up to this lifted lunge again, with your hips centered, focus on the back thigh now and push down with your toes, lift your upper inner thigh. Then arms reach, take that Y shape. This makes it a little easier to move the chest and the collarbones. So lift up with the heart, collarbones up and back and then engage the core. Take another big inhale and exhale. Hands come down to the front of your mat and this time step forward. Next inhale, lengthen and exhale, fold. And now hands to hips, press back on hips, lift shoulders up and back and then rise all the way up. Awesome. And now set yourself up. Reset feet to inner hip bone distance apart and parallel. 
and then lift and spread your toes and root them down. Fingertips reach toward the floor, lift shoulders up and back. And if you'd like, eyes can close. Take another moment to feel and notice. And come to a place of gratitude. And now softly open your eyes. And the variation of warrior three that we did before is always an option for you. You can always have something for your hands to come to. But we're gonna do our warrior three into our figure four pose. So hands to your hips. And the other option here is to have a wall in front of you or beside you to hold on to. That's always an option. So with your hands at your hips, a little bend to your knees, shift your weight over to your left foot. And now as you squeeze your glute and push down into your foot, into the floor, lift your right foot and start to extend your leg behind you. Come into the place that is comfortable in your body. So it doesn't have to be completely parallel with the ground. That's not the point. The point instead is to find that place of strength, okay? So rotate, Ooh. rotate outer right hip down. So your toes end up rotating down. And then as you extend more forward with your ribs and your chest, think of your collarbones lifting up and then engage your low belly and your ribs. Take a big deep breath. And again, you can always have hands down on blocks here instead or at the wall. Take a big, full, deep inhale and exhale. And now strong through your standing glute and your core, rise up with your torso and cross right ankle over your left knee. And from this place, hands can be at your heart. You can always reach your arms into that Y again. Settle hips down. Sitting bones back. And even think of sitting bones back and lifting. And now, full deep breath, shoulder blades on your back, lift your collarbones. Yeah, and then engage your core. Full deep inhale, long, full exhale. Then inhale, rise all the way back up, set your foot down, arms back down by your sides, and shake it out. Notice what's there. As you let your eyes close and tune into what's there, choose gratitude for what's there to work with and for what is strong about your body and about your mind. And now shift your weight over to your right foot. And again, Squeeze the glute, bend the knee, and push to lift the leg behind you, coming into that warrior three on the second side. Outer left hip drops down as you turn your toes down. Big deep breath, tone, low belly, ribs, lift your collarbones. Take a big breath. You can always extend your arms in front of you if you want, or keep your hands at your hips. Full, big, deep inhale, long, full exhale. Feel free to bring hands to blocks. Then tone the core, tone the standing glute, and rise back up with your torso. Cross the left ankle over the right knee and begin to settle your hips down. And now you have those choices. You can always hold on to a wall or your blocks or bring your arms to that Y your choice. Hips back, sitting bones back and up. Take a big deep breath. Draw shoulder blades onto your back and then lift your collarbones. Full breath. Good, inhale, rise all the way back up. Foot back down, arms back down. Let your eyes close and take a moment for a full breath. Inhale, stretch up overhead. And exhale, bend knees to fold over your legs. Inhale, lengthen part way. And exhale to fold. 
plant hands, step all the way back, downward facing dog pose. And the lower knees down, hips come to your heels. Take a moment for a child's pose. Move around a little bit, find the variation that serves your body the best, gives you a chance to tune into what's there. We're gonna take a gratitude filled breath. And now gently pushing yourself up to your seat, come all the way down to sitting bones. And we'll give a little more stretch through the inner thighs here. So take soles of feet together. And you can always prop knees here. That's a great option, especially if you have a lot of tension through hip flexors, extenders, low back. Take a full, big, deep inhale and sit tall. Think of tilting your pelvis more towards your feet. Take a big, deep inhale, long, full exhale. Then inhale, rise all the way back up. Soles of feet come to the ground. And then we're gonna come to lay all the way down onto our backs. And from your back, we're gonna pull knees up into our chest and rock. And then we'll take a spinal twist. So if you'd like to cross the left thigh over the right, just take the spinal twist over to the right side, you can, or just knees together to take your legs over to the right. Prop, adding something underneath, or if your knees are together, something in between your legs, so that your left shoulder can be down. Then either open the left arm up to a T or a cactus, your choice, deep breath. Then inhale back up to center and switch the cross if you're crossed, or just take legs together over to the left side. Laying your legs on top of something or set something in between or both. And then as you open up with your right arm, again, a T or a cactus, whichever feels good, take a big breath and recognize, notice the difference for yourself. And now back up to center and feet come to the ground and start to set yourself up into your best resting pose. Think of a way here to show yourself some gratitude for taking this time. Find that position that helps you settle. Take a few moments to let your breath become soft but full and rest. and bring awareness back to your breath. Add some gentle movement into fingers and into toes. And 
As you're ready to bend your knees and roll over to whichever side feels best this morning. Then gently press yourself back up to your seat. And as you come to your seat, take a moment to sit up tall and return to a full breath. With hands at heart center, either stacked one on top of the other or together in Anjali Mudra. Reset this intention of gratitude. Finding those moments throughout your day to tune into some gratitude. Full deep inhale to sit tall. Exhale, bow towards your heart. Have a beautiful and peaceful day. Namaste. Thanks, everybody.